Welcome to the What's New in Autodesk Fusion for November video. In this update, we're excited to showcase the latest feature and enhancements our team has been working on the past couple of months. Let's dive in and explore what's new. First up, data and collaboration. You likely work in teams, so getting everyone on the same page is critical. We've added some great functionality in this area to streamline the product development process and help make better decisions faster. Here are a few of the highlights. In the Fusion web client, it is now possible to copy a design and include its drawings. When copying a design file, you will be presented with a new screen where all the related design drawings are shown and an option to include the drawings. You will also be able to distinguish drawings that are out of date which will not be copied with the design. Fusion's new configurable numbering schemes enable companies using the Manage extension to define the format of their item numbers so that they match their company standards. Administrators will find new tools to define their company numbering schemes within the Fusion web experience. Once the schemes have been defined, users will be able to select from a list of these numbering schemes while assigning numbers to their components giving them the flexibility that they need when generating numbers. In this release, we've made it easier to find designs and drawings by searching more file properties, such as component name and part number properties. Speaking of improved search, we've now given you the ability to narrow your search to specific projects or files and folders in the current hub, project, or folder. You can find this scope of search dropdown on the left-hand side of the search bar. Joining a hub is easier in this release, removing the need to go through an invitation email. After an admin invites you to a hub, it will appear in the Fusion Hub switcher for quick access. For users who first start Fusion, the process for joining a hub will remain the same. Meandering is a technique in PCB routing that length matches traces to balance signal delays and maintain timing and signal integrity especially in high-speed circuits. Our updated meander command now includes an intuitive interface that allows you to specify length, tolerance, and gap spacing. This provides precise control over trace adjustments for design performance. Adding Quick Tune to our Quick Route assisted interactive routing lineup is a game changer. With Quick Tune, you can select a trace or group of traces and have the tool automatically meander them to match the length of the longest trace or input a custom length value based on your design needs. All selected traces will adjust to closely match the specified length in moments. This time-saving capability ensures signal integrity and precise timing in high-speed designs, leading to more reliable and efficient PCB performance. Finding the correct parts for your schematic fusion design is essential. This Fusion update makes it even easier. Now you can search for parts directly within the Library Manager, accessible from the Place panel. Type the name of the part you're looking for in the Library Manager filter, and you will get a list of libraries that have that component. This feature is invaluable, especially when you want to use a part created by a specific librarian or supplier. With a clear view of all available options, Selecting the ideal part for your design becomes simple and efficient, helping you save time and resources. If you've ever seen a circuit board, you've likely noticed the green color. This is a solder mask. This protective layer shields the PCB from environmental factors while exposing only the connection points needed for soldering components. In this latest update, we improved the options and interface for defining solder mask details particularly for pads and surface mount devices, or SMDs, in the library editor and vias on your PCB. These improvements make it easier to tailor the solder mask to your requirements. We've also expanded stencil definition options for SMDs for those who use stencils to apply solder paste. As you know, stencils are thin sheets with openings that precisely match your pad layout. They are used to apply a solder paste before wave soldering. One notable enhancement is the grid pattern stencil type, which is ideal for larger thermal SMDs, increasing precision and ensuring uniform paste application for
for reliable thermal and electrical connections. We've introduced an enhancement that allows for seamless alignment of PCB assets with construction lines defined in the Fusion Design or 3D workspace. This integrated workflow is ideal for consumer product design and effectively bridges the gap between mechanical and electronic engineering on a single platform. Fusion's electromechanical capabilities eliminate traditional file conversion hurdles, smoothing cross-disciplinary collaboration. Mechanical engineers can now draw reference lines and shapes directly on the PCB layout, providing valuable guidance for electronics engineers in precise component placement. This update empowers electronics engineers to utilize the align command in the PCB workspace to position assets accurately along these construction lines, enhancing alignment for component rows and breakout holes while reducing design time with greater precision and accuracy in developing consumer electronics. In the Fusion 3D PCB workspace, you can now choose the exact plane for placing holes, adopting the familiar behavior from the design workspace. This approach enables reference capabilities for precise placement, which the 2D PCB editor will adopt. This ensures a smoother workflow between mechanical and electronic design, allowing you to align mounting points and standoff locations, contributing to a more cohesive and manufacturable product design. In consumer product electronics design, it's common to encounter situations where components in the schematic need to be swapped for alternatives, whether due to better pricing, supply chain constraints, or changes in part availability that could impact manufacturing timelines. Fusion's library swap capabilities make this process seamless, allowing you to efficiently replace parts throughout the design with just a few clicks. In this update, if a component variant becomes unavailable or undergoes a name change, the Apply All option lets you quickly update all component instances across the design ensuring that your project remains aligned with current inventory and minimizes disruptions to prototyping and production. Volumetric latticing is now officially parametric. Integrated seamlessly into the product design extension, you will now see a volumetric lattice feature in the timeline, allowing you to edit values using the parameters table and create configurations that include lattice structures. Gone are the tedious manual changes for any upstream design modification. With this release, we've eliminated these limitations to get you back to designing your parts. We're introducing Edit Initial Position, which allows you to modify the initial position of a component directly from the context menu. Previously, positioning a component during its initial placement was basically permanent, and any further adjustments would create a new move feature in the timeline. And we all want a tidy timeline, don't we? The new edit initial position functionality lets you adjust the initial position without adding new features to the timeline. It's available in both parametric and direct modeling environments, as well as in edit in place and the PCB package generator workspace. In this release, we're introducing Configure on the Fly. This new functionality allows you to configure and test features as you build them, seamlessly integrating configurations directly into modeling features via an easy to use tab. You'll find a new second tab on modeling features that provides configuring options as they would appear in configuration mode. As you create or edit a configurable feature, Use the controls on the Feature tab to define the feature, then switch to the new Configure tab. Checked Aspect will be added as a column in the Configuration table, allowing you to continue modeling without the need to switch context. The new Contextual Configure tab is available in a wide range of command dialogs, but for an extensive list of supported features, check out the What's New blog. We also welcome your feedback on which features you'd like to see supported next on the Insider Forum. We'll link more information on the Insider Program in the description below. Mesh bodies can now be configured 
which allows you to adjust the appearance, physical material, and visibility of mesh bodies. To utilize this feature, enter configuration mode and click on a mesh body in the browser to open the configuration options. You can then check each option to add them as columns to the configuration table. This improvement simplifies the process of customizing and managing your mesh bodies, enhancing your overall design experience. Sketch groups are here to help you better organize and manage your sketches within the sketches node of the browser. This feature allows you to create named groups, making it easier to sort and handle sketches, especially in complex models with numerous sketches. You can also nest groups within each other to create subgroups, providing an improved structure. Feel free to drag and drop sketches and groups to reorganize them, keeping everyone's increasingly complex designs neat and organized. We're enhancing our fastener libraries yet again by adding the most requested content type, rivets. You'll now have the ability to incorporate rivets into your assemblies using the library's automated workflows. It's important to note that the rivets will be added to their non-deformed state. This new category will appear alongside bolts, nuts, and washers, and includes over 70 different rivet families. We're excited to introduce support for configurations in drawings. You can now include multiple configurations within a single document, allowing you to showcase model states or different design iterations directly. This feature offers the option to have different sheets for each configuration or multiple configurations per sheet by adding additional base views. Additionally, you can switch the configuration for a selected base view or apply it to all views within a drawing, enhancing your ability to present comprehensive and detailed designs. We're improving the automated views creation in drawings to enhance your automated outputs. With this view optimization, redundant or unneeded views will no longer be generated, ensuring that your drawings are clearer and more efficient. This improvement not only helps in avoiding similar views that add no benefit, but also allows for larger scales and better dimension placement, ultimately providing a cleaner and more useful drawing. There has been an update to the toolpath modification tools within the addition of a new function called leads and links. This enables the adjustment of leads and links on a toolpath without requiring a complete recalculation. This not only significantly decreases programming time for toolpath adjustments, but also helps users resolve issues that might be challenging or impossible to address solely by modifying strategy parameters. The modification tool allows for updating either all leads and links or a manual selection of individual ones. Users have control over various elements like clearance geometry, clearance and retract heights, start and end positions, rapid links, transitions, and leads. The clearance area is the safe location where the tool moves to after performing a cutting move to position for the next move. This previously could only be defined as a plane. You now have the flexibility to set clearance and retract heights for four and five axis 3D toolpaths to use cylinders, spheres, or inclined planes. For example, with a four axis part, retracting to a cylindrical clearance area is more efficient than retracting to a plane. Similarly, using a sphere for five axis toolpaths can optimize the tool retract motion. This new functionality can reduce cycle time by making rapid link moves more efficient, especially in complex geometries. The flat toolpath is a powerful toolpath, identifying all the flat regions and automatically generating toolpaths for them to be machined. We're introducing additional enhancements to the flat toolpath to refine it to be even better than before. Enhancements have been incorporated into the approach moves on closed profile passes adjacent to walls so that a horizontal arc move with a slight incline is generated to reduce the risk of the tool leaving marks on either the wall or the floor as it enters and exits the profile pass. Instances where the toolpath rolls around corners as it exits open areas have been significantly minimized as well. 
The standout feature of Void and Machine Surfaces from September's manufacturing release greatly enhances toolpath control, allowing precise machining choices, allowing you to both machine and avoid surfaces in a single toolpath without being exclusive to one or the other. Fixtures are also automatically avoided when defined in the setup, and you can create custom surface groups with specific clearances. November updates include adding this feature to the horizontal and swarf strategies. Whisper cuts are when the tool is performing a cutting move but removing little to no material and can typically occur during rest machining. In September, we deployed an enhancement to the 3D Adaptive Clearing Toolpath to reduce air cutting and now we are adding to that with a reduction of whisper cuts during the fine steps. Reducing these whisper cuts can greatly decrease the cycle time with little to no difference in the amount of removed material, leading to a more efficient roughing toolpath. Understanding the tool axis motion of your toolpath is important in multi-axis machining. You can now display contact normals information in the toolpath data dialog settings. This feature shows the contact normals for each toolpath point available. Steep and shallow, blend, corner, deeper, geodesic, advanced swarf, rotary parallel, rotary contour, and rotary parallel are currently supported with more to come. This option is extremely useful, allowing you to visualize surface normals to identify potential issues and diagnose tool axis motion problems. The part removal process from the build plate can now be simulated by directionally cutting in either the X or Y axis direction or using the default single step removal. When directional removal is enabled, the build plate is gradually cut away in four stages near the end of the process simulation, giving you a more accurate prediction of the final part distortion. You can now duplicate components directly within their 3D printer's build area. Previously, you had to duplicate parts before creating an additive setup. You can now create copies within the setup using the new duplicate command, which adds instances to the active setup in three ways, at the original location for manual or automatic arrangement, in an array to place parts along a single axis, or along the X, Y, and Z axis to form a pattern. For Mac users with the manufacturing extension, you will notice significantly reduced calculation times, averaging of 25 to 30% for certain toolpaths. This improvement allows better use of multiple cores on Macs, particularly for steep and shallow toolpaths and those using collision avoidance. Previously, calculations were limited to four cores, but now all cores can be utilized, speeding up processing times. Thank you for making it to the end of our What's New for November. I know we had a ton of updates this release, and we're really excited to see how you use them. Let us know which feature was your favorite in the comments. Stay tuned for more updates in the future, and we'll see you in February.